Hello, everyone. This is an oral presentation prepared for Unit A589, Epidemiology and Principle of Research. In the coming up slides, I will be talking about the use of vitamin D supplementation as one of the contemporary public health intervention around the world. In countries like Australia, vitamin D deficiency among the elderly and the children is becoming one of their biggest public health concerns. With a low level of vitamin D consumption diet and a lack of sunlight exposure, it is increasingly common for the elderly to be vitamin D deficient. The lack of vitamin D in our body can accelerate the rate of bone loose and cause secondary hyperparathyroidism. For construction and maintenance of healthy bones, vitamin D plays a major role in our human body. With the effect of vitamin D, calcium can then be absorbed and get stored into our bones, which is an essential process for body development. It is therefore suggested by some people that taking vitamin D supplementation can reduce the chance of fracture and osteoporosis development that often occur later in life. Weaker and brittle bones is often a feature found in most osteoporosis patients. The likelihood of experiencing fracture or osteoporosis is suggested to associate with the amount of bones that is built during childhood and the level of bone that is lost during adulthood. The need of vitamin D supplementation during early childhood is therefore suggested for the benefit of reducing the chance of fractures or osteoporosis later in life. Nowadays, vitamin D2 and D3 can be commonly found as a form of supplementation in the market. The goal of my research is to identify studies that is associated with the effect of vitamin D supplementation for improving bone mineral density and its efficacy in preventing bone fracture in humans. I've gone on to the Cochrane database of systematic reviews and the Lancet online journal article database to look for relevant studies with the intervention I've chosen. I narrowed down my research for choosing papers that is conducted only within three to four years and to using keywords like vitamin D and bone during the research. I skimmed through the objective of each relevant papers. After all, I pick out three systematic reviews that I think is the most suitable for my vitamin D interventional studies. So this is how the Cochrane database is look like. I click on to the search CDSR, which stands for the Cochrane database for systematic reviews. The three systematic reviews that is chosen involved randomized control trial and quasi randomized control trial only. And that is selection of systematic reviews fall into level one of the hierarchy of evidence diagram. The study that is involved within the systematic reviews is according to certain inclusion and exclusion criteria. The selection of studies included in each of the systematic reviews is done by searching through a number of databases. This include prestigious institutions like the Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials and Medline. And hand search of journal article is also carried out in the identification of relevant trials. This process is administered with no language restrictions. To prevent source of bias, Assessment of the potential vitamin D interventional study is, is carried out by two review authors in each of the systematic reviews I've chosen. The independency of data and risk of bias assessment involved the randomization of subject groups, allocation concealment, 
selective reporting and blinding. By using this methodology in the design and selection of potential studies, the risk of systematic errors and source of bias is likely to be reduced. Besides, data of the included interventional studies is processed through meter analyze under the use of fixed effect and random effect models. If the statistical heterogeneity, in other words, the inconsistency of data, is considered to be significant, further calculation is implemented using either chi-square, i-square, n-1, or Cochrane's Q statistical tests. The chance of potential publication bias is also assessed through processing a funnel plot or Eggers regression model. Through conducting meter analyze under the use of systematic testing of data, the accuracy and the validity of the final results increase the explicitness of the risk of random errors in the systematic review papers. The reported outcome of the three systematic reviews is defined very much in common. It is suggested that the use of vitamin D supplementation solely is not statistically significant enough to show a positive effect on the improvement of bone density mineral in either children, adult, postmenopausal women, or older men. This is therefore suggested that vitamin D supplementation does not reduce the risk of fracture or osteoporosis development in humans. However, under the co-intervention use of calcium and vitamin D supplementation, Data suggested that it can create a slightly positive effect on the prohibition of fracture later in life.